Hello everyone and welcome to Elion's Joy. I am your host today, Elion Haan, and I am glad to see you here. I have a lot to share with you today. Sharing is caring. Welcome to Win Win Women TV and welcome to part two of the pain management <clears throat> toys and tools and little things that we can do for ourselves. Part two today. Um, I am glad to be here. I'm excited about this show and giving you a little bit more uh, tips and tricks and things that you can do at home because we talked last week a lot about chronic pain and things that we forget that are around us that we can do for ourselves. And I'm going to continue some of those things today and make some more time to share that with you. Also, these things overall, of course, are great techniques to do for your anxiety and if you sit a long time or if you travel a long time or if you feel that stiffness uh, kind of kicking in in your body even if you don't suffer from chronic pain and if you have been flying or if you have been traveling and and sitting for a long time behind your desk then these are things that you can do at home and it's like i always say just get off the couch for a little bit and put this put these toys put these props underneath your television so that you can help yourself feel a little bit better, get up off the couch for a little bit, keep watching that show, but do those little exercises for yourself. We talked lower back pain that everybody suffers from, right? Is a huge percentage of people that suffer from lower back pain. And I always say, and I share this with you a lot, so I repeat this, but this is a sign of the times because we have more sitting overall and we had definitely more sitting overall the last two years and during the COVID times and during all these stressful times that we had to stay home and although Netflix now might be our best friend what did I do before Netflix right how was my life but before um, even during these times we have the we have the 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 um, we can get off the couch right for a little bit and we have the the ideas that I want to share with you that you can do at home so that you feel a little bit of incentive to do that while you're still watching um, your favorite television show. So this is what I want to share with you today. Um, I am a wellness and fitness coach, teacher. I am a life coach and I do this for a living, helping people with just chronic pain issues. I'm not talking acute pain and chronic pain or to our acute pain. We talked about that last week. Chronic pain is that constantly nagging pain that is always there and that we feel that keeps acting up. So we talked about a uh, big time about arthritis last week. And a lot of the people that I work with are suffering from arthritis and so do I. So I think I have that from too much working out, right? And just kind of wear and tear on your body. Osteoarthritis, as I suffer from, just kind of brittle bones and just kind of your body breaking down a little bit. I'm not there yet to say, well, let's go ahead with hip, hip replacements. But it is one of those things that we really seriously have to think about um, doing something for uh, that chronic pain, to keep that chronic pain away a little bit right to work through it and i honestly believe that even if we suffer from pain and if you are on some medication for it that you can maybe lower the dose of your medication or maybe do something that makes you feel a little bit better physically that helps you like i want to share that with you that helps you to uh, push a lot of that pain and that chronic pain away from getting worse right so to prolong um, the things that you can do, the time that you have, put another 20 years in there and work proactive. Proactive is a big word that I use a lot because I must say in my previous life or, you know, in my former, the first 40 years, I didn't really think about the outcome of what I was doing and what it would do to me 10 years from now. Now I'm a little more mature, so nicely to speak, or a little wiser, hopefully, <laughs> I can see that I really want to do things for myself that help me in the next 10 years or in 20 years, and that I can still walk and that I can still sit easy without back pain, and I can still find the support that I need in the tools that I'm going to share with you today. So I can still do that and can keep that neck pain, 
right? That tension out of there and keep the back pain away. What we all suffer from so much and that sciatic pain and that's that that's um, <clears throat> uh, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, arthritis, and definitely the nerve pain. Everybody just suffers from that from time to time. And that goes, that sciatic nerve goes straight down your legs all the way to your ankles. And then I have some kind of a little couple of things for neuropathy, the things that you can do for your feet to keep your feet alive and talking back to, or to, to, to your brain, right? We want to do that. So what I want to share with you today is that there's a lot of things that we can find to work with. And number one, one of my favorites, and I shared this with you before, is the tennis ball. So if we have a little ball, and even if it's not a fitness ball or the ones that we are using in the fitness industry, but you want to do a little cheaper version, a tennis ball is great, not just for sciatic pain, but also for just tension in your muscles and tension in your back. And what I do in the first place always with my ball, with my tennis ball, is I roll it. I roll it over painful or stressed areas, right? Stressed areas where I have tension and where I can keep that rolling because that rolling of the tissue, that loosening up of the tissue is so important. So we can feel that fascia that we are talking about, that, that web, the fascia is kind of a web of uh, tissue that keeps us uh, together, right? It binds our whole body together. So we just kind of let gently and loosely want to roll it out. And if I feel a lot of pain or tension, then I can just grab that tennis ball that I always have on me, will travel, right? That I always have on me and I grab that and I kind of massage the areas out. And if I want to do that in my neck, I can do that in my neck and I can use the ball and put a little pressure on it and just do it myself in case there's nobody available to do it for you, right? Otherwise I would say, hey, give me a neck massage. Right, but it feels good if you can do that with a tennis ball yourself. So roll it with a little bit of pressure gently over the areas where you feel tension. And last week we, we definitely discussed that a lot of our tension, a lot of our issues that we deal with, stress, anxiety, depression even, um, just pain overall, grief, worry, all that stuff in our head is will manifest itself in our body. So that's why if we don't feel good or we don't know what to expect in a certain situation or we are not prepared or we are scared or we are nervous, then our stress will definitely show in our body and it will go in our shoulders and it will tense up in our upper back. That's where we tense up first, right? We just really have that upper back tension and that shoulder tension. So this one is a great one just to kind of roll that out and go over your whole body with a tennis ball. And if you want to order some other balls for that, and you can find them in the store or you can go to my website and there are some of those soft balls that are a little softer than a tennis ball, but a tennis ball will do the job. But you can find these massage balls, even if you just use a stress ball for it, the one that's a little softer. Just keep rolling it out and keep going over the tension in your body. Lately, I feel a lot of tension here in my hip, and this is definitely my bad side. So I will go over my hip with a tennis ball, roll it down to the tensa fascia lati right here on the side of my hip and then roll it down on my IT band. Now that hurts. That I can definitely feel and kind of hurt so good, right? So this is my rule of thumb in all my fitness classes over all these 40 years that I've been teaching and that I've been doing fitness and wellness and stretching and yoga and Tai Chi, all this, this stuff. If it, I always say, if it hurts, if it really hurts badly, you stop. You don't do it. If you feel pain that you don't like, I cannot feel it. I cannot feel what you're feeling. So you stop if it hurts really bad and if it doesn't feel good. But if it hurts so good, do more of it. That's what I always say, right? So if it hurts so good, do more of it. And just keep rolling on these muscles. And what I love about the tennis ball it will definitely help me with the sciatic nerve pain. And what I do with it, I sit on it. I have one on the couch. 
and I have one on my office chair. And I sit with one side, the side that is really tense, and there's always one side that is really tense that you can feel. I sit with one side, with one bottom, on the ball. And I'll show you what I do. So I put it right here, when I'm gonna sit on the chair, I put it right here, underneath the soft part of my gluteus maximus. And what that does is it puts a little dent in that muscle. And if that puts a little dent in the muscle, then that muscle softens a little bit. So you take the tension in a very passive way, you take the tension out of those gluteus muscles and out of the piriformis muscle. And the piriformis muscle runs right there also underneath. And that is kind of like a big muscle that has a lot to do with the sciatic nerve. If that muscle tense, tense, is tensing up, is, is stressing, and is cramping and is contracting, it's because you feel some pain maybe in the sciatic or maybe in your hip or maybe in your lower back, but that mus muscle will tense up. And if you sit on that ball for a little bit, then it will ease and release some of that tension. So don't do it too long as well, but just do it as long as you feel good. So do it with, you know, that one bottom on the ball, just next to your sit bar. And it just puts a nice little dent in those muscles and they will release and ease a little bit. So that's what we want to do. We want to go from this ease to ease and release, right? From the pain, wherever the pain is in your body, the muscles around, I always say, will tense up. The defense mechanism of your muscles will start to, to activate, right? And uh, we don't want you to do that. But au contrary, we want to ease and relax the muscles. So you can do that with that tennis ball. Going through another couple of things that you can use at home. We have here, two wonderful fitness ball this is called officially a bender ball and this would be the one from the store right that you can buy in so you don't have to get one of those really expensive fitness balls you can and i will be glad if you let me know where to get it to email or to email you back and to tell you about it but this will do for now and you get a little ball and you just kind of like put that against the wall and you gently rub your back around it and against it and it feels really good so you can put some tension there and then you can just use it to ease and release some of those muscles and you can also go go higher playing ball here you can also go higher between the shoulder blades put some pressure and lean against it and then kind of rub it out right i have to come a little lower here Whoop. Kind of rub it out between your shoulders. So I'm putting some pressure, I'm leaning against it, and I'm really putting with that ball some pressure on the shoulders and to release that tension. So really simple things that you can do for your upper body, for stretching out, and for releasing that tension. Last week we did it ourselves, remember? We just stretched, stretched sideways and put some extra pressure with our hands and going both ways and relaxing forwards and making half circles like i said last week i don't like to go back with our head too much because then you know you might hurt yourself in the back there is so many of those that, that, that nervous system right that there's so much that runs through um our spinal cord so we want to be really careful but with half circles forward you can stretch it out a little bit and with the ball with a little pressure on the ball you can just massage between the shoulders and that feels really good put it against the wall and stretch out a little bit that way so we can use anything that we already have at home even a smaller ball will work or even a ball one of those squeeze half balls right half the size of this that the dog is playing with you can use it as well to put an ease and release a little bit of tension between the shoulders now, the third thing that you can do that I have shown you several times is to use one of these Dyna bands. These are called stretchy bands. This is the lighter version and this is a heavy version. So this one doesn't give me a lot of flexibility or a lot of play, right? It's a little bit tougher. It gives me more resistance if I want to work with this one. And this one is a lot softer 
and gives me a lot more gold. Now, if I want to stretch out with the Dyna Bands, I just hold it right here between my hands, about shoulder width. I'm going up with it. And I'm gently going to stretch sideways. Now, what I'm going to do here is really pull this one, my, my right hand, down, your left hand down. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really going to stretch up through the shoulder blocks here. And that feels really good. You always want to keep that band in your peripheral view, right, for safety, so that we don't go too far over. And we just want to kind of keep it here. Stretch to the side and pull on a little bit more. Stretch to the side and pull on it a little bit more. So when you play with this Dyna band, it's a really good stretch, stretch tool as well, stretch toy as well. And if you want to use it for strength, you can also do that. Then you kind of pull away a little bit and you keep that tension on there. So if I say healing is feeling, feel. Remember, we go back to feel where the pain is and then heal by bringing some stretch and flexibility or some strength to those muscle groups. And most of the time, in order to heal shoulder, lower back, hip, knee pain, we also need to think about strengthening it a little bit. So I'm just going to go through a couple of tricks that I've learned over time that you can do here. I can just keep the tension. And if I keep the tension right here, I can just really feel that strength building up in my upper body. So in front of me, I can just keep my shoulders out of it. And high up, I can stretch out with it, right? And I can even go all the way sideways and just kind of pull back with my hands to get that upper body twist. So it feels really good to use one of those bands. Hey, we'll travel as small as possible. And you can get them in your purse and take them with you. Now, if I have a diner band, what I always do if I sit down is I sit flat on the floor. And if I sit flat on the floor, mm -hmm. I want to put this band underneath my toes. And that way I can stretch towards it. So if I sit flat on the floor, I want to stretch towards that leg. And hold that Dyna band in my hands because if I do that, then it's a lot easier to use as a soft tool for stretching because I can go a little bit more towards my legs without playing and having too much pull, right? I just don't have to, to have so much action myself. I can just softly use that band as an extension of my arms and hands. So this is a great tool to work with at all times and I've shown you some things before and so if you are on the floor and you use this for sitting on the floor or for stretching and laying down I'll show you a few more things here in a little bit that you can do with that. Now on my next thing here we have done the balls and we've done the diner bands I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use the ball for strengthening your upper legs it's a really old exercise, and you know it, but I use it in a different way. And for strengthening the upper legs, you will, if you do so, you will have more protection for your knees. The stronger your upper legs are, the more protection you have for your knees. If you have knee pain, your knees can't help it because they're just kind of like joints, right? And there's a bunch of ligaments that are trying to hold and tendons that are holding the knee together. But what we really need to do is work on our inner thighs and outer thighs, of course, but inner thighs as well that we forget many times. And if we work on our inner thighs and we really use some of those tools for it and some of those toys, some of those props as we call them in yoga, then you can strengthen that way also your legs, and your thighs. So I have my ball. And I'm going to use my ball for that. And I'm going to sit up on the edge of the chair. I always say sit on the edge of the chair. And I'm going to put the ball between my thighs and my feet straight under my knees. My feet straight under my knees and the ball between my thighs. Now, if I'm sitting up straight here on the edge of my chair, my full leg is off the chair and I'm having a 90 degree angle, right? Now, 
in between my thighs, not in between my knees. You don't want to damage the knees. I'm going to put my feet closer together, really close together, and I'm going to squeeze into that ball. So I'm going to really squeeze, 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 squeeze with my thighs into the ball. I want to kind of sit up straight, keep a nice tall posture, and just keep working into that ball. And sometimes you can start with one set and sometimes you can work yourself up all the way to, for instance, three sets of 10 or three sets of 15. And I already feel it. You immediately feel those inner thighs and we have to strengthen the inner side. So thigh. So just having a little ball around in the house, play with it, have it everywhere, have it roll around on the floor and see how you can use that to strengthen your inner thigh. And that is also part of the core. So that way you feel that you're strengthening the core, your upper legs, your inner thighs, your abs are activated. That way, if you sit up straight, your abs are activated. And that way you feel a lot stronger. And of course, you, if you want to, you can do that standing up, right? I can do that in between my thighs again. Keep my feet close together under. Bend the knees a little bit. And then squeeze in, 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 into that ball. Oh, yes. Feels so good. It's also great for balance. It's also great for posture. So you really feel that lengthening feeling and that strengthening of the inner thigh. So playing with toys right here. You can do the same with a block if you have a yoga block. And a yoga block prop is really a prop that you see in a lot of yoga classes. And what can we do with yoga prop, with yoga block? I use it in my classes for holding on to, again, an extension of my arms so that if I go forward into a forward fold, I can hold on to that block a little easier. I'm just gonna put it in front of me. And that way I have something to hold on to if I'm going to stretch out, right? And if you're going to go forward and you stretch and you're not really sure of your balance, then like I said last week, I want you just to hold on to the chair or to the wall that is close. So if you're holding on to the chair while you're stretching out, whoop, then that way I can go to the block and I can release fully stretching forward. Right, so you always want to have something to hold on to or be close to the wall. And that way you can also do your little, if you're holding on to something, you can do your little balance exercises. Right, and just have your little pendulum swing. But you want to do that everywhere because we talked about that a lot. Going back a few television shows, we talked about balance and we talked about lengthening and posture correction. So I will not go into that today. But I want to remind you, we did that and I'm going to do it again. We talk about it a lot. You want to activate the core. You want to stand up straight, open your heart to the, to the sky. That's where it all is, right? So you have the block and you can use your yoga block if you don't have a ball. Squeeze, 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 right? We want to just go inwards with the yoga block. If that's all you have, then use that, right? So now I have a little exercise for you to use your foot muscles and to keep your feet uh, moving all the time. And that is really, really important. So if you are suffering, for instance, from a lot of nerve pain and damage and neuropathy, and, and you feel that you constantly have the tingling feeling in your legs or in your feet, then these are a couple of things that you can do for yourself. I'm going to show it to you. This, for instance, by the way, talking about tools, this is a great tool. It's a knee pad. And this knee pad you can use for underneath your knees. It's actually for gardening, but I found it and I bought them all and I use it with my clients in the studio in my yoga classes for underneath our knees. So sometimes you can roll up your mat or some people have two mats, but if you want to have one of those around, ah, 
feels really good as well. I use this for underneath my knees. We'll do that some other time. But I wanted to show you all the props. This is a yoga bolster, a yoga pillow. And if you sit on it on the floor, then you sit a little bit higher. And that way, if you sit a little bit higher, it is easier to keep your back straight up and to keep in a 90 degree angle because then your hamstrings are off the floor. So if you're sitting on the floor, use this pillow underneath your back. In this case, I'm just gonna show you what I can do for my toes, for my legs. Again, I always wanna sit if I exercise on the edge of the chair. And in this case, I'm gonna have a little towel or a little scarf something on the floor that you can grab with your toes. And I want to grab that little towel or that little scarf with my toes, pick it up and put it on the other side of my other foot. I'm gonna share that with you again. So you can see a little bit better. I have my little towel. I'm gonna grab it. Sit up straight, right? You want to sit up as tall as possible. If that is good, it's good for your back. If that is possible, just keep your posture tall. Now you're gonna grab with your toes. You're gonna grab a little towel, a hands or face towel, or a little scarf. You wanna grab that with your toes and put it on the other side of the other foot. And then I'm gonna grab it with my other toes and bring it back to this side. So that way we are constantly exercising our feet. And when we do that, we get that nervous system talking, right? Go right back, all the way up to your brain. So it's really important that you keep rolling over something. If you have those rollers, right, those foot rollers, or you can use a little, um, a little weight roller for it, just keep rolling your feet out over something or keep picking little things up with your feet. The most important thing or the most difficult one that I actually do, one of the most important ones for foot pain and for just general exercises for your foot and keeping the flexibility in your feet and keeping the pain from staying away, right? Just pain management again, a little bit more flexibility and strength in our feet is that we just don't roll them and we grab all kinds of things. The most difficult thing that I do with my patients is grabbing a little marble. So, I, you know, I have a little bag with marbles that the kids used to play with, right? Glass marbles. And we have to pick with our toes, pick one marble, put it on the other side or put it over something, right? Just put it a little bit away and then do it with your other foot and grab that marble and put it again back to where it belongs. I hope that you really got some great ideas today from all these exercises. I am not done, so we keep going with a lot of ideas. But these are some home tools and toys that you can use anywhere, and you can take them with you, and you can play with it, and you can do it underneath your desk. You can do it at work. You can do it at home while you're watching telly. So I hope you got a lot of ideas today to prevent some of that pain that we're dealing with. I also have many, many, many yoga and exercise videos, anxiety videos, breathing videos, meditation ones, Tai Chi and Qigong ones on my YouTube channel. And you can find that YouTube channel on my website, www.alianhaan.com. And you can find t-shirts and you can find other fun stuff and my book that's coming out soon. So make sure that you subscribe and send me an email with yours but all the information and all the links to social media and to all this fun stuff and many, many more videos on YouTube are to be found on my website, www.alienhaan.com. And reach out if you have questions, if you want to ask something, if you're not sure about something, please reach out at all times. You can find me anywhere. And I'm so glad that you were here today, Elian's Joy, my joy comes from healing and feeling and knowing where it is and knowing what I can do for it. 
So I hope you enjoyed it as well today. And thank you for being with me at this show, Elian's Joy. And I'll see you next week. A lot more to share. Sharing is caring on the Win Win Women TV. See you next week. Bye.